Welcome to the Master Circle. We are so glad that you're here with us today. The Master Circle is your home base, go-to monthly session where you can get expert insight and ideas about all things fundraising. So maybe you've got a burning question or have a special challenge. This is all about access to great fundraising practices, techniques, and tools is what we're all about. So if you have a fundraising for a cause and you want to really get some great traction, well, you are in the right place. Here's how it works. The Master Circle is about innovative fundraising techniques that are driven by you, your questions, what it is that you want to know about fundraising. And every month we collect and respond to questions from our audience and we dig into the topics that you suggest. Now the Master Circle is brought to you by Mosaic Nonprofit Development. We're a fundraising education firm focused on creating effective and sustainable fundraising initiatives for nonprofits. And we work hand in hand with the leadership, professionals, volunteers and investors of NGOs around the globe to teach them how to develop strategies and implement solutions that increase resources and enable mission achievement. So we're all about leading innovation in fundraising education. Now one of the way Mosaic Nonprofit Development helps you get really effective fundraising results for your nonprofit is through our online courses like today's live master circle session, workshops, and our one-to-one -one fundraising coaching where we work with you one-on-one -on -one to really focus on advancing your cause. So before we get started today, we've got a couple of housekeeping uh, items. First and foremost, can you hear me now? Can you hear us? Um, we found with GoToWebinar that if you're having a sound issue, um, the best uh, and quickest fix is to log out of the session and log back in. And that takes care of most of the issues, but sometimes, sometimes there's a couple of other hiccups. So if you want to dial into the audio, just call 909-259-0012. Your access code is 4644-258-869. And that will be in your email, your confirmation email. So if you get hooked um, with the sound and you can't hear and you want to call in, um, check that email. That information will be there for you or you can call that there. Now, the audio PIN number um, is 5. So you'll also get that when, um, as you log back in, well, that will come up. Now, the next thing I want you to know is that the Master Circle is a super interactive session. And we don't want you to miss out on any of the crucial bit of information that you're looking for. So sound is very important. Now, let me tell you who's here today. I happen to be Heidi Hancock. I'm here with Mosaic and ready to focus on helping causes get wildly successful with fundraising. I'm a certified fundraising executive and have raised over $70 million for causes all across the world. I really love working with people all over the place to help them get resources for their causes so that they can achieve their mission. David, tell us a little bit about you. Hello, Heidi. I'm David Svet. I'm forging the path for nonprofits everywhere through marketing communications with Mosaic. I'm a marketing communications leader. I am also a graphic designer and do market research. I'm into kayaking and woodworking and a whole bunch of other stuff. That Heidi? sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing in the Master Circle today? Well, David, this is going to be a really cool session. We have had so many requests from folks with questions about online fundraising. So today we've brought the best of the web together for you, and we are talking about the best online fundraising tools. Now, remember, the Master Circle is cool because you can ask your questions anytime they hit. So for today's topic, we've got some questions that were sent in, and we'll also be answering your questions as we go along today. So now uh, I've got uh, somebody has already jumped up. So before we begin, this is how you communicate <laughs> with us. When you, <laughs> when you have a question, um, we've got a note from our audience that, David, we want you to get a little bit closer to the mic that you ah. are coming across a little quiet. So this okay. is important. We really want you to hear everything. So great. Thank you, Susan, for keeping us on our toes. So if you've been with us before, you're going to know how this works. So I want you to find on the right-hand side of your screen, I want you to find the question box. And in that question box, um, is where you're going to ask your questions any time they happen to hit. Now, we're going to have a couple of practice questions just to get your fingers working. There's two things that I need to know from you right now. First thing is I want you to open that question box, wiggle your fingers, and the first question is an easy answer, yes or no. Can you hear us? Can you hear everything? Can you see everything? Let us know if our platform is working. Yes, thank you, Michael. Way to go. Is my so voice clear enough for you now? Oh, good point. 
Is everybody able to hear me? Am I close enough to my mic? Yes, yes, yes. The oh, answers good. are coming in. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So everybody can hear much better. So Susan says, you got it, David. Woo. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, Werner. All right. So now tell me the second question that we have for you. Now this one's a doozy. I want you to sit down. I want you to get ready again. Keep those fingers warm. All right. So that you get the most out of today's session, please tell us the what one thing that you would really like to walk away knowing today. It can be on today's topic, which is the best online fundraising tools, or it can be something completely unrelated to today's topic. But uh, you know what? It would be a good idea to keep it kind of in the fundraising realm. I kind of don't think the questions about where's a great place to eat in Hong Kong probably aren't going to fit the bill. So I want you to take a moment, think about it. We're talking about the best online fundraising tools. And let me know what things are going to be very important for us to cover today. Great. So we've got a couple of questions. Things that work in countries other than the U.S., absolutely. Yep, we are going to be covering those kind of questions. Um, we've got, I'm fundraising for uh, using auctions. Are you talking, yes, we will be talking about auction items today, absolutely, and how to manage your online uh, fundraising with that. Okay, looks like Natanya is looking for options on crowdfunding. Great, we'll talk a little bit about crowdfunding. And are there any key phrases... Ah, excellent. So Susan wants to know, David, this is a great question. I'm going to be excited about this one. Are there any key phrases to use to get companies to respond to your requests? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a great question coming in from Kim. She says, how do you raise funds when you are a one-person shop? Well, online mm. fundraising tools are a great way to, um, to make, uh, make your job either harder or easier, but you can certainly get your message out um, as a single person. So we'll certainly talking about different things um, along those lines so great thank you thank you Kim okay so guys don't forget it doesn't have to be on topic it can be off topic but we are ready to talk about online the best online fundraising tool so let's get this show on the road David what we got we got fuzzy animals um, just like usual um, Yay! I see more fuzzy animals so wait a minute let me look at this Okay, David, we've got a gorilla in a swamp. What is that all about? I, what does that have to do with the best online fundraising Yeah, I don't know why he's in the swamp to begin with. Um, but if you look closely at his right hand, you can see that it's carrying a stick. And apparently this uh, was photographed and videotaped and shows this gorilla using the stick to balance as it goes through the water and also check the depth of the water to make sure it doesn't get in over its head. So today, uh, obviously, we are talking about tools. So all of our animals today are going to be using tools. <laughs> so, all right. Okay. <laughs> On uh, so animals with tools. This should be good. Let's uh, let's jump into some online tools. I've got another note, David, too, that you're fading again. So stay oh, close to that. All right. All right. Hmm. So we're going to start with a couple of things as far as, since we're talking about online tools, just to make sure that we're all kind of on the same page. So some of the things that we'll, we'll cover, we're talking about platforms. That is certainly a tool. A platform is an online software, and as it, it's used as a service. So you as an individual, you as a cause, um, actually use that product um, as a service. So they're serving you as the individual or cause or the customer of the platform. So that is a pretty much, um, just so that you know too, a platform um, tends to be a full function capability. So if, it, if you're thinking about a software solution, that means that you'll have um, a user interface so your donors and, and, and folks can actually come to the platform. They will use the tools on the platform to interact with you. The next one that we've got, the next uh, terminology I thought would be important to kind of clarify today is the best. All right, well, best is pretty subjective. Well, as you know, if you've been here in the master circle before, since we like to really, really key into what our folks are dealing with in the real world, we use best as far as what people have asked for for different situations that they're dealing with. So we've taken a look at all of the tools that are out there and found the ones that we feel are easy to use, reliable, um, and that you will get results without necessarily creating huge headaches for yourself and trying to learn how to use them. So... Um, most appropriate, most facile, most easy to use qualifies for the word best. Not necessarily the biggest features, the coolest logos, but the best actual functionality. Next, next definition that you want to kind of be aware of is a payment processor. 
as far as online fundraising, a payment processor is the actual mechanism that allows you um, to do a financial transaction. So this is where people actually give and the, and the money changes hands, which is sometimes different uh, than a platform. It's different, um, but it can be included in a platform. And the easy way to think of it is those, you've seen the give now buttons or the donate now buttons. And what happens when you press that donate now button, that is the payment processor. So there's all kinds of different payment processors that are, uh, that are available for you. All right, next thing that we want to make sure that everybody's clear on, we're going to talk a little bit about social media. Social media is a great tool. It certainly works very well for, um, for fundraising online. Um, and there are thousands of different websites that fall into the social media realm that promote social interaction. So when we're thinking about um, options for crowdfunding and Susan's questions about key phrases to get companies to respond to your request, social media is one of those ways that we use to communicate. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And again, there are thousands and thousands of platforms available for you in that area. The uh, next one is online community. Um, when we're talking about, again, fundraising online, oftentimes a community is a virtual group of people. They may not never ever meet in person. It's kind of like our master circle here today. Folks get together. Um, and they, they're, they're bound together by shared ideals. Um, or efforts. They're all working together, but they create a virtual community. And some of the tools that we'll talk about today, it's very helpful, especially fundraising when you're fundraising for a cause, if you can either create or access um, online communities, because those are people who are already bound um, by something that's similar, their shared, shared values and ideals, and accessing them and getting in front of them as a cause is a great way uh, to enhance your, um, your online fundraising. So, all right, so with that uh, vocabulary out of the way, David, let's get started. What do we got first up for our tools? Well, <clears throat> Heidi, what we've got here is a beaver dam, and not just any old beaver dam. This is a Swedish beaver dam. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, see how the, the water is high on the right-hand side, and it's kind of swampy on the left-hand side? So it, uh -huh. in the river, it's dammed up uh, the entire river, so it goes clear across the river. Uh, so unlike a beaver lodge that's a, a structure in a lake, uh, looks like a lump of sticks sticking out of the water, uh, beaver dams actually include a lodge, uh, but they also create the lake that uh, out of the river that the beavers use for food and protection. So the entrance to the lodge is underwater. It makes it difficult to enter, and the external structure of the dam makes it difficult to dig through to get to the beavers. So they're safe inside. Nothing else can come in there with them. It's, it's just a good place to hang out for your beaver. Um, this particular dam, as I said, is in Sweden. Uh, I thought the beavers uh, were North American animal, but it turns out they're, they're more international. Uh, brings us to our first question, uh, a very winding way to our first question. Uh, what platforms and tools can I use in the U.S. and overseas? Uh -huh. I was wondering how you were going to tie in the, be the Swedish yeah, beavers. Long and <laughs> winding road. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's a great question, and that was one of our first questions that uh, so uh, someone had brought up. So let's take a look. When we're talking about um, questions, platforms, and tools that, I could, that work in the U.S. and overseas. So we've got a, a small collection of, let's start with some platforms. And, and as far as being a cause, um, these are ones that are particularly helpful for nonprofits um, in that the, if you are a U.S.-based registered organization, they have very robust um, tools and communities that will help you um, fundraise. So part of, the in, part of the interesting thing as far as, like, for example, Razoo, um, they've got a great um, back end as far as education and support for um, uh, causes, uh, email platforms that let you really communicate and build out those, uh, those uh, communications. CrowdRise, for example, um, is great at managing teams. So if you are a cause that happens to be, again, registered in the states, and maybe you do marathons or you do golf outings, but you've got lots of people or lots of volunteers who are out there in the community raising on your behalf, CrowdRise has a platform and their back tools are really, really helpful to manage volunteers and to really get a kind of a team effort going with fundraising. Now, another one that's kind of interesting to take a look at, CauseVox is also 
um, similar in that way. And Fundly, one of the nice things about um, these particular platforms is you get that endorsement um, of being an officially registered 501c3. So anybody, if you're registered with these platforms or if you're running a, a campaign on these platforms, anybody who is looking for um, authentication or you know wanting to make sure that they are um, supporting a, a registered nonprofit, uh, that this these different platforms give you that little extra um, component. Now I am going to pass on to you a whole series and do now pull up that question box and let me know if you can see. But I've just entered um, a series of. Um, URLs that you can go to take a look at these different platforms. Now, the one I want you to know about that's also interesting um, for your cause, depending upon what it is that you're doing, is Launched. And Launched Solution, that's an interesting software solution in that it's a white label solution. So that means that they've got the software and the platform and, and everything is put together that you can take and develop out your own fundraising platform. So if that sounds like if you've got a community Perhaps you're maybe a community foundation, or um, you are an arts council, or um, you know a larger organization that um, you have already an established community offering up a, a, a specialized fundraising platform is is good for you. So, guys, pull up that question box and let me know. Can you see those? URLs that I sent you today because this is again we're doing online fundraising tools so I'm gonna, we're going to be sending you a lot so let me know if you can't see them should have come up yes great fabulous okay all right so that's our that covers our US based platforms um, again robust tools they're wonderful um, for again for causes because you're going to get more than just a transaction um, processor more than just a payment processor you're going to get email management you're going to get events management you're going to get volunteer management or team management um, you can you can scale them up or scale them down you don't necessarily have to get all of the services but whatever is going to fit for you as a cause these ones are really great um, for doing so we're going to take a look at some of the international uh, fundra uh, fundraising platforms and these are a couple of our favorite ones um, the, our favorites happen to be just giving um, just giving, uh, both Just Giving and Network for Good happen to have very uh, well developed, again, um, educational platforms. So that not only are they teaching you how to use their software, how to be effective um, using the platform, but they're also giving you extra support for what are effective techniques for fundraising or communicating um, or even email techniques uh, with. Um, your cause. What are the issues that are facing nonprofit organizations? So we really, really like those uh, particular ones. Now, many of them, uh, many of the international fundraising platforms also require you to be an authenticated or registered nonprofit organization uh, uh, in in whatever country that you happen to be giving it. And my favorite one that didn't make, we didn't grab their logo, but my very favorite one happens to be uh, Give and Gain. And I'm putting, again, I'm putting a couple of URLs in the box um, for you there for our international um, platforms that we really like. Um, in Give and Gain, what's special about Give and Gain is that they are actually working in the home currency of your donors. So if you're a cause that's located, say, um, in South Africa, and you are reaching out to your expatriate community or you're reaching out to your donors that happen to be in the UK, um, it Part of what Give and Gain does is they make it easy for donors to connect with causes because their financial transaction happens in their home currency. So if they're living in the UK, they might be working in pounds or euros, whatever it is, but it's but it makes it easy for them. So that's kind of a cool little um, piece that's there. Um, what's interesting too about just giving, they've got a cool a cool text to give tool that's part of their platform. So if you're working internationally, um, many places, uh, most people are most reachable by SMS text. And so if you're looking to communicate, they've got that functionality already built into that particular platform. So that's particularly helpful. So we've boiled those down as far as platforms for you to kind of take a look at. Um, just to give you a sense of what's happened um, is that there's about a bajillion platforms that are out there. So everybody's got a platform. Um, it's really expanded. Just in the UK alone, there's over 500 platforms that are available for registered nonprofits. Um, and we find that, that these couple ones are our favorites. All right, so that covers us um, for platforms. What do we got going on next, David? 
Well, <clears throat> what we've got yeah. next is an octopus. Um, this little guy is using both a shell and a seed pod to create a shelter. So it has multiple tools filling a function. It brings us to our next question. Lily B. asked, uh, which platform should I use for an online auction? What do you think, Heidi? Are multiple tools needed for this, or are there platforms that are multi-channel? Aha. Uh -huh. uh, excellent. Okay, so we've got a multi-tool multi using Octopus, and that's a great question because you can go either way, especially when we're looking at online fundraising tools. So you can have a platform that may have uh, additional uh, parts to it, or you might have an all-in-one component. So let's take a look at some of the ways um, that they do that. And auctions are a great way to fundraise. Um, especially for organizations online. And there have, have been several uh, auction uh, platforms just in and of themselves that have really developed um, services for the nonprofit space. And let's start out with something that's really, really wicked clever, right? So I, I'm here in Boston. That's a little bit of my, my brogue for you there. But let's take a look at Mission Fish, Mission Fish first. So what that is is Mission Fish Fish actually kind of teamed up together with PayPal, with PayPal's nonprofit giving fund. Remember, PayPal will be a payment processor to create um, an eBay, right? That was the other part of it. We've got eBay and PayPal all wrapped up together with a nice wrapper for Mission Fish, which is for nonprofits only, to create that. So you've got no <laughs> you've got no software to buy. You've got nothing, nothing that you need to do. If you're running auctions, you can easily, it's just like setting up an eBay store, but it has a very special nonprofit uh, communications component for you. So you can run all the auctions that you want, just like you would in an eBay store by taking a look at Mission Fish. So that's kind of an, an interesting one. Another one that um, we found that was pretty, pretty robust and pretty cool um, is that you can take a look at bidding for good. You can put your stuff up here at any time, whether if, say, maybe as an organization, your fundraising um, happens, it's kind of rolling that people are making donations of goods or services that come throughout the year. And so you have kind of a year long, all the time, either individual items go up for auction or you might have a concentrated auction event. Bidding for good is really flexible in that way and that it rolls through um, and sorts your goods or your items that you're having in your auction um, and it lists them by category. Um, like eBay. So um, they've got that a very uh, also nice tool that you can use rather than just specific items at a time if you've got a live auction um, and you need to if you need to actually manage bidders and manage uh, bid sheets um, and actually run a live a live online auction. So that's a nice little package there. Um, also take a look at benefit events. That's a that's a nice a nice online fundraising platform. Again, we're getting a little bit more robust that you can you can use that for both online auctions and to manage your offline auctions. Say you're actually holding an auction maybe at one of your special events. And it's kind of cool to combine offline auctions with online auction tools because you might preview your items online or get some get some people excited about that. And you might run consecutive, um, maybe you've got your silent auction that can happen online at the same time that you've got your um, live auction actually going. So take a look at benefit events. Now, the next one I want you to know about is Charity Buzz. Now, this is interesting because this is like a high-end marketplace. So if you are getting donations of, maybe you've got a relationship with a, a high-visibility um, artist or entertainer, or uh, maybe you've got tickets to um, Aruba. Maybe one of your donors has, has you know, a significant... Um, property that that they're putting up for auction or, or donating to your charity to use this particular charity buzz really kind of focuses on um, that high-end marketplace and they work the way that they work they're independent so they're not going to they're not going to it's like an auction house you can put your items up with there and then you receive uh, the benefits of those sales so you've got a professional auction house that's actually running your auctions think like Sotheby's or Christie's right working online high-end items for your cause um, and they work specifically on a 20% fee. So there's no back office. It happens all online, and they handle it, um, again, specifically for nonprofit organizations. Another one interest, interesting that's, again, more robust is Bidding Owl. Now, Bidding Owl's uh, processes, they've got raffle tickets. They can do sponsorship sales. You can manage a catalog of your auction items. 
There's event-based auction tools. Again, if you've got uh, an on, uh, a live auction that's happening, so if you're, you've got bid sheets to track or check out, uh, and they've also got the entire auction website. So bidding, bidding out for nonprofits is a very robust, full service. If auctions are your thing, um, take a look at them. And then uh, another one that you can look at is Ready, Set, Auction. Again, very robust, specifically for nonprofits. Now, the cool one that is not listed on here, um, if you happen to use Salesforce for your donor management system or for your organization's CRM or database, um, Salesforce has um, an app that's free called Groundwire. And that is a, it's free. Like I said, it's free. And if you're using that database already, if you're using Salesforce for your CRM, um, you've got all of the tools to manage the information related to running an auction, both live, on-site, plug-in app for Salesforce. Really cool. All right, so I'm going to do the similar thing. I'm going to give you a whole um, set of URLs so that you can check these out. You can copy and paste these out. And if these are interesting things to shop, you are set for auctions. All right, so let me know if you've got those. If they showed up, pull up that question box. Excellent. Yep, think great. Okay, all right, so David, what's next? Oh, ch hmm. a chimpanzee chewing on a stick. Oh, we're really reaching here for online fundraising with animals today. What's it doing, David? Is it is it brushing its teeth? Tools, Heidi. They're using tools. And <laughs> no, that's not a chimpanzee. That's a bonobo. <clears throat> and he's oh. using a, it's using a stick as a dipping stick. So it's got its hand on a, a big termite mound. Do you see there? Its left hand is on a big termite mound. And uh -huh. the bonobo has figured out that it can dip this stick into the mound. And when it pulls it out, it can eat all the termites on the stick. So it, it's putting a lot together there to feed itself. I mean, that, that took some ingenuity to figure out and make that thing into a tool. <laughs> Brings us to our next question. Um, Reginald O. asks, how do I integrate an online platform campaign into my annual fund drive? Oh. Interesting. And, okay, so Reginald wants to know an online platform campaign. Okay, so he's running a platform. Uh, he's running a campaign online with a platform into his annual fund drive, into an existing annual fund drive? That's a great question. Um, and so we're talking, again, multi-tools, uh, very similar to our last question. Um, okay, so, well, i got to tell you, um, Reginald, we don't know of any specific platform that is specifically designed for an annual fund drive. However, um, what we recommend that you do is we put that you put your campaign pieces together on your calendar, on your organizational calendar, and that you actually pull out small chunks on a platform or, um, or your social media channels and through your email campaigns. So as you as you have put your annual fund uh, fundraising calendar together of all the different events and all the different solicitations and the different ways that you're asking onto a calendar, what we what we suggest that you do is that you can pull those out and you can specifically run parallel messages um, at times on your calendar on your online fundraising platform. So what you'll be doing is that you're looking at ways that you can take the messages that you're with your with your other activities and actually put them into small chunks of a on a platform instead of running a big plat a big campaign that runs all year long just set up a series of mini campaigns or small efforts that happen to coincide within the different messages that you're working um, on your annual fundraising campaign so for example um, maybe you've got a fourth quarter uh, item, or you've got different specific messages that are programmed out in your fundraising plan on your annual campaign um, for uh, for for different quarters. And you've got different goals. You've got to raise a certain amount of money at each particular um, benchmark. Well, say you've got a fourth quarter team driven drive. Maybe you're having a big uh, event. Maybe that's when you're holding your golf event during that particular quarter. Well, if you're holding an uh, an offline fundraising event. Um, that's also a great message that you can use and run smaller pieces um, on your online fundraising platform or actually use that online fundraising platform to communicate what's going on um, in other areas of your organization. Now, you can also create teams. Remember, teams are fabulous for online fundraising. More prolific people are talking about your cause or your fundraising organizations, um, the better off you're going to be. And so if you, you can use those online tools to deputize your volunteers or your other donors to share your fundraising messages. And the more 
messages and the more people that you ask to share, and each time you change your fundraising message, that's a great way to actually use that annual campaign message calendar by asking people to share your campaign, which you can use your online platform to automatically do for you. You just press a button and it asks people to share or you can turn people into fundraisers along those lines. So that's that's kind of a way that you might want to take a look at your annual fund um, your annual fund question. Okay, so all right, David, what have we got going on now? Well, uh, Nut Bonobos here. What we've got are chimpanzees this time. Uh, and they're having a picnic and are considering sharing an apple slice, or at least two of them are considering that it should be shared. Um, so they're not using any tools. Somebody else used the tools to prepare the food for their picnic. They're just attending an event. Um, so that brings us to our next question. Angela A. asks, uh, we do events. Okay. Uh, heard mobile and online are cool. How could we deploy mobile or online at events? Ooh, okay. Like apple, yeah. apple pie. Yeah, we hear a lot of questions about um, deploying mobile. Uh, and there are a lot of myths and mysteries about it. Uh, mobile is very cool. I mean, you, you should be using it. You have to get involved with it. It's, it's growing. It's only going to continue to grow. It is replacing the desktop computer. So between tablets and, and uh, smartphones, that's definitely the future for fundraising, and you need to be there. Um, one of the myths that we've heard a lot about is uh, when the Red Cross... Uh, raised so much money uh, for Haiti. Um, they did it with mobile, and it would, was just off the charts, the amount of money they were able to raise that way. That was a collision of time and technology all hitting at the same time as a hurricane. It all just happened to happen at once, so that one of the first really big mobile fundraising campaigns, text-to-give campaigns, was the Red Cross for Haiti. Haiti's in the United States' backyard, uh, so they're neighbors. We saw the hurricane coming. It was horrible. The red, it was baseball season, and the Red Cross was able to get uh, on scoreboards with text to give. So they're at, at the, a baseball event, and they're putting text to give up on the, on the scoreboard. And you get everybody at the event. You know, it's real easy. Click, click, click. There's 20 bucks or more. And it, it added up in a hurry. So what we've found that doesn't work is trying to do that text to give or uh, move people to some kind of online platform through their mobile device. If you're at an event, so you're, you're at a, a black tie fundraiser, one of the last things you want to do is tell everybody to stop paying attention to the MC in the front of the room and pay attention to their cell phone. Um, it, it moves everybody away from you. I mean, you're going to spend a lot of time trying to keep them from doing that anyway. Um, people checking messages, checking texts. So you don't want to ask them to do that. That's usually a disaster at an event. Um, what does work, though, is uh, like what worked for the Red Cross at the, at the baseball games. If you have another event that you can piggyback on that's... Uh, a sporting event or a fun event of some sort and get everybody to take a brief moment to look at your organization, get online and either text to give or go to a giving platform, that, that could work great. Uh, and you're, you're simply getting access to a big audience immediately in front of you. Um, another thing that we've seen is you've got, you got to pay attention to your audience um, younger people tend to skew very heavy for <clears throat> being mobile users. So if you're fundraising with college kids, uh, like Penn State does THON every year. It's a dance-a-thon fundraiser, raises a massive amount of money, and a whole lot of that happens through mobile. Um, they also send out teams and are using multi-platforms all over the place. It, it's a huge, huge event fundraiser. Um, but, but they do well with mobile because of the audience that they have. So Heidi, um, can you tell everybody about some of the, the tools that are available for doing this? Sure, sure. We've got a couple of tools that are specifically helpful for mobile fundraising or mobile functions. And David, I had to, I had to think back, you know, being here in Boston, I am of course part of the Red Sox nation and I love it. I go to the, the stadium or I go to, um, 
Fenway and during home games at the seventh inning stretch, we will have um, the fun, the Red Sox Foundation. They come on and they oh. actually have a specific cause and they raise. And so we get to find out uh, at the top of the ninth inning how much money was raised oh, cool. during that seventh inning stretch. It's really kind of cool way to to do fundraising. Very cool. um, so yeah, events are great. Um, a couple of a couple of platforms you want to know about. Take a look at Raz Mobile uh, or Raise. Raise mobile, um, but they again, it's more of a kind of a platform, or it brings all of the tools together into, and it creates a dashboard for you as an organization or cause that brings the different pieces. It pushes out your text messages. Um, it it gives you landing pages um, where you can uh, bring people together. But it's kind of a comprehensive, very specific mobile um, solution for for fundraising. And another interesting um, one, and, and again, we, we recommend ones that have stayed the course. They've, they've, they're not just brand new solutions that are coming out and trying something new, but they've actually had significant success and, and have supported causes as they've raised online. Another one you want to take a look at is TapFunder. And TapFunder is a specific, again, mobile tool, very similar to an SMS or a text, uh, text to give uh, solution. It's set up not so that you don't have to create your own text to give um, platform or component, but it's uh, a package that uh, you enter in your messages, and again, you manage it much like a dashboard, again, a software, a platform tool um, that is specifically driven with mobile-friendly um, communications. One of the things that, that um, has happened um, is, is that whether you're communicating on your phone, um, if it's text only, if you're looking at your uh, your, uh, your iPad or your, your tablet, um, all of these things have different um, accessibility. And so it's important that your web-based communications and your fundraising are all adaptable and changeable um, so that they work along those lines. I'm going to send you, okay, so now we've got a couple. Again, those are, are great platforms that have been around for specific mobile applications that you can, you can set up and use and deploy in very creative ways for your cause. Now, when we start talking about um, event management, I think that was the other part of Angela's questions. Uh, she said that she, that we do events, and we heard that mobile and online are cool. How do how do we deploy them? Um, it depends what it is that you want to do. Uh, what it, what's cool about these? These are fundraising platforms here, so they're actually um, processing the money and accepting the gifts for you. But they've got very fabulous event management tools. So if you again, if you've got volunteers that you have to corral, and you've got um, uh, people that you have to check in, and your guest list or your um, Say maybe you've got, uh, a, a, again, a golf outing. So you've got players and different times that have to be scheduled and, and teams of people going everywhere. I mean, managing events is a big deal. Um, but these particular ones make the fundraising easy, and they also give you all of those different um, event management tools. Again, so that's First Giving. This is one of our, our fabulous um, – this is a, a platform that was specifically designed for fundraising events. So – all of the fundraising tools are built out to make fundraising events easy. Again, now Network for Good. What you want to know about Network for Good? That's a, a great internet. I mean, all of these all these work for international um, causes. But uh, Network for Good under their area, what you're looking for is events now, and it's a separate package that you can add on to your Network for Good um, fundraising platform that gives you that events management um, component. That again inspires volunteers orients donors, makes fundraising easy. You can even track um, different different processes and, and or progress towards goals. Now, do jiggy, that's kind of cool. This is really specific. Um, it's almost like a marketplace for things like a golf outing or an auction um, or any other, you know any other kind of charity events. But do jiggy is kind of kind of cool along those lines to take a look at um, as far as not only managing, but you can also have virtual events. So these might be events that don't have that don't happen on at an actual place. They only happen online, um, and do jiggy is kind of a cool one that lets you manage all kinds of things along those lines. So I'm putting those URLs for our favorite um, event management platforms up for you there. Take a look at those. So mobile is not always the right solution if you're doing a live event, but you can create virtual events. Um, and there are creative ways, um, if you think about your donors and users, of using mobile to access um, funds or to fundraise for a very specific uh, period in time. Mobile is pretty, pretty widespread. All right, so that wraps up our, our mobile question. What's up 
next to David. An yeah. otter. That's an otter. <laughs> what is it doing? Well, yes, Heidi, uh, that is a sea otter. Um, oh. Sea otters like to feed on crustaceans and shellfish. I'd like to come back as an otter someday. Uh, they use rocks to crack the shells. So this sea otter is uh, using a, a rock to crack a shell. Um, apparently, sea otters will keep a rock uh, that they like and use it repeatedly opening and cracking shells. So they, they find one that works well as a tool and, and they keep it. Um, sea otters are pretty sharp that way. Brings us to our next question. Uh, Jane T. is running multiple campaigns wants to know how to make them work together better. Mm, good question, mm -hmm. Jane. All right, Dave, why don't you take the lead on that one? Because I know you are communications programming genius. Yeah. Um, first thing you need to do is to, to make a calendar of all the different channels that you're using and a day-by-day -day calendar of what's going to happen in each of those channels. A uh, spreadsheet works great for it. Um, we've, we've got some tools like that at Mosaic that, that we can make available to you. Uh, it's, it's a matter of knowing what's going to happen each day in each channel so that you're not stepping on your own toes or stepping on somebody else's toes. And you can use it to get your whole team working together so they're using uh, personal accounts in all the social media uh, platforms to promote your business account. Um, that way you can get a lot more reach uh, using all of your employees. Um, Great. Well, you've, yeah. you've brought up a good point, especially when you're talking about channels, David, because confusion among donors is one of the things that we really want to avoid. And so if we've got multiple messages going out to constituencies and then we're asking them to do 50 different things, we don't want to get them confused. So your, your calendar suggestion, how would, you, how would you use that to cut down on the... Um, the confusion or how would you keep that from competing with yourself right if you've yeah, got multiple yeah. messages going on how do you do that right um you need to stagger them uh and and create focus so what is the the most the most important thing you've got going on right now uh that's coming up in the near term and focus on it uh you can remember to mention things that are coming up later but they will get much less focus and much less uh, noise in all the channels from you. Right? So promote the biggest thing that's coming up next first. And that's, that's where the calendar helps. It, it lets you figure out how to rotate stuff through and, and really keep track of it. Great. So in, in putting in the calendar, if you've got multiple campaigns and you've got multiple messages, you're probably also using multiple tools. Whether you have, so you'll have certainly have different landing pages. Um, so in your calendar, then you'd also want to match your messages to what that specific call to action is and where they're going and making so that you're not, again, you're specifically driving traffic to that, to that particular site, right? Yeah. And uh, if, if you're handling multiple social media accounts or all the different social media channels, you can use a tool like TweetDeck or Hootsuite or, uh, gosh, what else was there? Um, Post Planner. Post Planner. Oh, yes. I love Post Planner uh, for Facebook. It's awesome. Um, these allow you to schedule broadcast messages. They're not the ones where you interact with people, which you have to do live. Um, but you can schedule out broadcast tweets, posts, etc. Uh, and get them all set up first thing in the morning or schedule them to go out each day, um, set it up for a week in advance. It, it's a huge time saver. Right. So the, the important part is just keeping things, and this will be a really helpful thing as you're thinking about if you're a one-person shop, if you've got it all programmed into uh, a calendar, then it's just push the button and copy and paste or, or execute and off you go. So that will save a lot of time, especially if you're you're running a, a small shop to put things onto a calendar. So we talked about traffic on that one, uh, David. So, and we've got some questions about how do you actually get people to look at your stuff? I mean, it's great to have all these tools, but if nobody's paying attention, what do you do? So wait a minute, wait a minute. 
David, we can't show dog fights. Don't you remember what happened to Michael Vick? This is not good. Oh, it's okay. They're, they're playing. I'm honest. Um, <laughs> dogs use very quick facial expressions. They're, they're called metacommunications to communicate with other dogs. Uh, so it's stuff that people don't usually see, uh, and they've, they've studied them and, and found that there are these tiny little facial tics that they have. So metacommunications are signals that modify the meaning of the subsequent signals that happen. One example is the play face and, and tail signals in dogs. Uh, that indicates that the, the subsequent aggressive signal is part of a play fight rather than a, a serious aggressive fight. So before these guys got after each other, they both did play face and play tail so that they both knew that the big attack was, was just having fun. It's a field of study that um, figured this out is called zoosemiotics. Uh, they study animal symbolism. Turns out that animals of all kinds use all kinds of symbols to communicate with one another. Pretty wild. Um, brings us to our next question. How do we target prospects? Ah, so now, as humans, as animals, we're looking at our metacommunications and um, our symbols that we can use. Well, you know, this also comes down to, to talking about community, right? So if we're targeting prospects, one cool thing, uh, there's an online tool. Actually, there's kind of two options for you. Um, one of them is called Care2. Now, if you remember earlier on, we talked about the benefit of having like-minded communities or people who are bound by similar ideals and having them exposed to your messages. And so driving that traffic is how do you get those eyeballs? How do you get people to look? And one place to, to do it that's very effective is to go where those communities are, where those people are already gathered. Now, what Care2 is, Care2 is an online tool. This is a membership organization. And what Care2 has is they've got some hundreds of thousands of people who have already self-identified and signed up um, because they're interested in, in nonprofit oriented social impact, green living, healthy um, components. Go take a look at their site. Um, and they've said, I want more information about people who are doing work in this space. I want to know what causes are being there. So you can, as a cause, become a member of, of Care2 if that's the right community for you to be in front of. And then you've got your, ex your message gets exposed to that community. Again, those hundreds of thousands of people, and you can work those, those communications component. Um, now, the next thing that you want to do, the option, other option for you is to build your own community, right? So this is where your social media comes together, and this is how it is that you actually ask people um, to sign up. This is your email list. This is your, your, your Facebook page. This is your LinkedIn page or your company page. But this is how where your main messages are that people can follow you and like you, and they're already opting in and saying, I am interested in what you're saying. They sign up to your email list. They've raised their hands and said, I'm part of this community. I have these shared ideals. Communicate with me. So what kind of signals do we have, David? Well, one of the best signals you can use in social media these days is the hashtag. Uh, hashtags are, are that little crisscross symbol on, on your keyboard. And it, it's sometimes used for a pound. Um, but the hashtag is searchable in almost all of the platforms now. So you could do um, hashtag Hurricane Julius. And everybody who's searching for information about Hurricane Julius would have your information pop up on that platform. So it, it really helps you get your message out. Then the next thing you need to know for targeting is uh, to make sure that the folks that you're following and are connecting with uh, are in your right demographic. So you need to sit down at some point and go through and figure out who your best donors are and who your most likely donors are, who your volunteers are, and, and build a profile of those people, and then go find more like them. Uh, strike up a conversation, be friendly, and you're out making friends in social media space. It, it just it's continues just, on to all your other marketing. Just like networking, but you're doing it behind the computer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Huh. All right, so what's up our, with our next talking about getting eyeballs and getting people to... Uh, to our thing. What's coming up next? Oh, all right. <laughs> is that a chimp or a bonobo, David? Tell me it's not using stilts. I mean, we've got tools. This is this is getting a little extreme. No, no, no stilts. Uh, that's a chimpanzee that climbed up on a structure at a zoo. Uh, it's using a stick to 
get ripe fruit from a tree that's overhanging its yard. Um, you know, that way it can get the fruit when it's at peak ripeness and hasn't fallen on the ground. Um, I think it's pretty amazing that it figured out that the best fruit is, is up on the tree and it needs to be picked as soon as it's ripe. So it hops up there and, uh, and bats it down with a stick and then runs down and, and grabs it before anything else gets to it. Pretty cool. Uh, brings us to our next question. It's a, a timing issue, like timing of the fruit. Uh, how do you create urgency in a campaign? Urgency is a tough one. Um, many, many causes uh, need to communicate urgency. The best way to do it is with a CTA and your call to action uh, and how you phrase uh, what you want people to do and making sure that every time you talk to someone, you're leading them to your call to action, and then you're actually asking. You have to ask. Fundraisers are good at it. Marketers tend to not be so good at it. Um, marketers are good at what they think they're doing is raising awareness, which is great, but that raising awareness needs to lead to an ask, and there has to be an ask or a call to action. So you're, you're asking them to to volunteer, you're asking them for money, you're asking them to download more information, you're asking them to uh, look at a different part of your website. It's a whole group of little bitty asks along the way that eventually get to donations and volunteerism. Uh, so to be compelling, it's, it's to tell a story that is urgent, and you create urgency by, by showing dire consequences or a, an action that needs to happen right now. Um, so it's a how you tell the message and how you put the message out there. The images that you use, they have to be compelling images that, that communicate a sense of urgency, that, that you got to do this now. And to be successful online, it comes down to your call to action. Like you said, how easy can you make it for them to do whatever it is that you're asking? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's it kind of is it's kind of difficult to create urgency if people can't take action on that urgency. So that's the secret secret sauce that goes with urgency is making sure that that call to action that 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 sometimes a URL or a button or an ask to share whatever it is that it's there. Oh, that's really cute, David. I don't see a tool. What's up with this one? No, he doesn't have a tool. Um, sorry, <laughs> I just thought he had a cool mustache. <laughs> this okay. is an, okay. Yeah, this is an emperor tamarind, or also called a Brockway monkey. Uh, they're named after uh, uh, German Emperor Wilhelm II, who also had a, a big floppy mustache like this. Um, these guys live in the Amazon, and you can see this one's mostly dark gray and has a big full mustache and a bit of a beard. Here's another one. Um, yeah, I know. There's all kinds. Um, this one is uh, a black-chinned Emperor Tamarind. Has a black chin, obviously. Um, but it also has a really nicely coiffed stash. And it's got more golden coloring than the other one. So like most animals, they use their markings uh, either to hide or to attract attention. Um, so like a peacock has all the big peacock feathers to attract attention. Um, with a mustache like this, this guy's he's going to attract some attention. That's a pretty wild looking thing. Gets us to our next question. Uh, Susan M. asks, how do I promote a campaign and attract attention? Well, there we go. Um, Susan, it, it needs to be multiple channels, online and offline, in order to uh, attract attention. Um, being consistent with your messaging throughout the platforms, online and offline. So offline being uh, direct mail, outdoor advertising, uh, print advertising. While those things aren't the shiniest penny right now, they all still work. And, and you need to use them, and you need to use them consistently with everything that you're doing online. So if you're going to build out a campaign, build it out to work in all of those multiple channels so that people see and are exposed to that same look and feel multiple times, and then it will break through and you'll be seen. Uh, have a strong call to action on all the pieces where it's the same, and you're consistently asking somebody to do the same thing. Eventually, you're going to get a lot of people to do it. And I think, uh, David, your your camera and monkeys are a good example that they stand out from the crowd. There's something unusual, yeah. and it, it and and you 
whatever you can do that actually is unusual that can call attention just in, in and of itself is a great trick or a great tool to use especially when you're fundraising online because you want to distinguish yourself yep they uh, stand out from all of the other messages out there all right so oh, tell me wait i think we've gathered up a couple of questions guys this is the time i want you to pull open that uh question box and if we haven't covered anything or if some of the stuff that we've talked about has made you wonder even more about um, online fundraising tools, type in the question now. We've got a couple of, of questions there. David, tell me about this slide. What do, what do owls have to do about it? Owls are cool. <laughs> they have questions. At the owls are even cooler when they have a matching wolfhound. <laughs> who, 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 is. who has questions, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so let's see. We've got um, let's see, international donors that support causes. Okay, so Michael wants to know, how do you find donors on an international basis that support causes in a specific area? Um, so this is a great oh, this is a great online fundraising um, question mm -hmm. because one of the great things that online fundraising allows you to do is break down those barriers. So you're in one region, you're not you're no longer limited to your uh, local community. You have, but but getting the messages out and finding those people wherever they happen to be in the world um, does take some specific strategies and tactics. So David, you want to talk about ways that we break beyond our location barriers and generate. Um, interest or find people who are interested in what our cause is doing. You bet. Uh, as Heidi said, uh, the internet is the big miracle that breaks down all the walls. Um, whether you realize that it or not, you are global now. Uh, and everything that you say can be seen all over the world for the most part. Um, so the, all those social channels can get you in front of people uh, globally. And the trick is to find someone who is interested in in a locale follow them and then take a look at who they're following and start following those people and building a following having conversations with them you have to start out by being conversational um, and then you can start gathering a following that's global uh, it's networking again online um, but you're hunting in a lot of different locales so that's a great way to get your message out. And again, if you're building your own constituency or building, again, this is all about relationship building and how do you, not only how do you find them, but how do you fundraise? So if you're looking for um, donors and if you're looking for major gift donors, which is where fundraising is very, very successful, um, getting your message out into places where people naturally are is a great way to do it. Another thing that you can do is you can tag on, right, um, with somebody who's already in that space. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and finding again a similar a similar message that can be promoted together. Maybe there's another um, another message uh, or cause or organization that's doing similar but not competing work that you can team up together and share lists. Oh uh, yeah, that's a yeah. yeah we've that's we've a got a, a white paper on that coming up um, from a campaign that one and uh, Heifer did together. So Ooh. Bono's Excellent. one organization. Uh, ran a Get Your Goat campaign leading up to the Christmas holidays. Uh, and they <laughs> teamed up with Heifer. So one wants to uh, prevent starvation and, and make sustainable livelihoods for people. And Heifer does that by distributing animals. So one promoted goat purchases uh, with, a, with a nice big campaign, um, actually sold a bunch of goats. If they got your goat, didn't they? They did. They did. <laughs> well, we're coming short on time. We've got a couple more really cool things that I want to share with you. So if we didn't get to your question today, make sure that you tune in. We'll certainly be answering them as we go along in future Master Circle sessions. Also, you can send them in by email. We'll answer them um, as they come. So um, we've got some, if you enjoyed today's session, we've got some great further learning um, resources that I want to share with you. So we've teamed up with an organization called Cause Planet. And what they do is that they preview um, books and resources and give you kind of the down and dirty skinny um, on what it is. So talking about today's topics about online fundraising, if you're interested in learning more, I want you to take a look at social change anytime, anywhere. And this gives you very specific details on how to employ online and offline channels to promote advocacy, raise money, and involve your community. You're going to take a look at how... Um, 
illustrate you know specific examples and case studies to apply your own advocacy fundraising and community building strategies in your cause and then it gives you some guidance so that you can equip your entire organization to pursue proactive versus reactive online management so then you become the driver's seat next one you want to think about is the content marketing for nonprofits this is a communications map for engaging your community to be becoming a favorite cause and raising more money yay we love that raising more money <laughs> So um, what this book covers here um, is how does your marketing and fundraising strategies dramatically change to attract donors and adapt evolving market influences? Well, that sounds pretty scientific, but if we're, that's what we're talking about today is who, who's trending, right? It moves so quickly online. This is a great um, area to give you some of those tools that you can help um, put those together. It gives you some of the latest practices that are really proven in nonprofit communications to successfully connect with donors and friends in a fast-paced, multi-channel world. And you'll be able to implement comprehensive content marketing strategies. So that was that calendar that David was talking about. A content marketing strategy that recognizes the advantages and drawbacks of today's platforms and channels. So that's a really great one. The next one is the network to nonprofit, connecting with social media to drive change. Again, social media is a great tool that we can use to have an impact. Um, but what you'll take a look at in that particular book is how to create a social culture for your organization by listening, engaging, and building relationships. So some of those things that David talked about today as far as reaching out and having communications or networking, it's all right here and specifically how is it that you do that. They talk a lot about transparency and how do you leverage crowd? How do you build crowds or get some crowds um, working for you? So I'm going to send you right now those links. Um, you can take a look at those uh, book summaries at each one. Now the cool thing about uh, Cause Planet, if you like um, that organization and you like what they're doing, they, they again they boil it all down to you so that you don't have to necessarily spend all the time reading the book. But it really gives you the down and dirty very quickly. Um, you can use Mosaic, um, and they will give you ten percent off if that's if something that's interested to you there. So write that down. That's really cool. What's coming up next? All right, we're almost out of time. So I want you to submit a question. So. Don't forget, we answer, we take questions all throughout the uh, month, and if we did, like I said, if we didn't get your question answered today, we'll certainly um, hit that in a next uh, a next session. But you can go ahead and fill out that form here. Tell us what's on your mind. We really love to hear what's happening and what your your challenges are. Go ahead and mark your calendar now. February twenty sixth will be our next master circle session, and what we need you to do next is we need you to vote on the next Master Circle session. I'm going to tell you how to do that um, in just a little bit. But watch your email for instructions on how to use, uh, log in for the next Master Circle session on February 26th. Now, if we get a recording today, you'll also have that coming in your email. So keep your eye on that inbox. Um, be sure that you stay online after uh, the webinar. We're going to have a quick survey. Again, you'll be able to vote for the next uh, topic. And another way, don't forget, there's a great resource out there if you take that um, uh, head out to our, um, our blog, which is right here. Let me put this by uh, the chat box for you. You can go ahead and sign up for the feed. Um, great articles that really give you very specifics on what it is that you need to do to get some great fundraising going and lots of different topics. So sign up for that. Um, don't forget for the survey. And then, if we haven't covered it all, this is how you find us. We love to talk with you. We want to hear what's going on. Mm -hmm. We've got a million ways that you can communicate. Click any one of them. Had yep. a great time. <laughs> so it's time to rock on. Thanks so much for hanging with us today. We hope you had a great time with the best online fundraising tools. Hang tight for that survey. It's going to show on your screen momentarily. David? Thanks, guys. It was good being with you. We'll see you at the next Master Circle. Okay, thank you.